The Paul Leslie Hour, helping people tell their stories. And now, your host, Paul Leslie. Hey, it's me. How are you, friend? Always an honor to have you joining us here on the Paul Leslie Hour. Your help is very appreciated. You can help these interviews come out of the archives and into the world by going to patreon.com slash the Paul Leslie Hour. There are some expenses associated with this podcast, so I thank you in advance for your help. Patreon.com slash the Paul Leslie Hour. Back in 2007 and 2008, I recorded interviews with all of the members of Little Feet. They were broadcast in a seven-part series that aired on the radio. This one is part three. This was recorded backstage at the Variety Playhouse in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the interview with Kenny Gradney. He's been long regarded as one of the best bassists out there. He has been the bassist of Little Feet ever since the Dixie Chicken album. Born in Louisiana, he replaced the founding bassist. Kenny Gradney has recorded and performed with a great number of artists ranging from Delaney and Bonnie, Warren Zevon, Bob Ware, and many other notable artists. It's my hope that you enjoy this backstage interview with bassist Kenny Gradney of Little Feet. Let me know what you think. It's our pleasure to welcome Mr. Kenny Gradney here on Time After Island Time. It's a pleasure to welcome you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So you hail from Louisiana. I was born in Louisiana. I was born in New Orleans. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles. I moved to Los Angeles when I was about 10 months old. And uh, my dad came from Texas. My mom's from New Orleans. And um, they both moved to California when I was just 10 months old. So I, I grew up in Los Angeles. So what about the music you grew up listening to? What? I, I well, I started playing bass when I was just about thirteen. I um, you know, I listen to all kind of music. I, I come from a very large family, middle child of eleven kids, so we we used to always my older brothers always do up in the yard, and I I was in a band ever since I can remember because my brothers, my oldest brother, and all of them. My cousins, Al McKay from Earth, Wind, and Fire, oh. and uh, they moved. He moves in, and I was fourteen, sixty-four, and we just started, and always had a band. Uh, the brothers, the Johnson Three Plus One, were my neighbors. They're from Louisiana. Uh, the gang, they're called the Rhythm Rebellion. They're called Rufus now. Um, Johnson three plus one is a brothers Johnson. These are all the people I grew up around and I did, we, you know, we had a, um, what you call a review, you know, uh, Motown and everything. We had girl singers. I was 15, 16. We had girl singers and a whole review. We should do all the schools and everything. So I was learning some, all kinds of stuff. We did Beatles songs. We did Hendrix songs. We did Motown songs. We did everything. But I was a big James Jamerson fan. James Jamerson and Paul McCartney, my two favorite bass players, and I used to just... I wasn't real hot on the Beatles back then, but I really loved the way he played, you know, the way he interpreted what he was doing. Very melodic. Part of the song. And Jamerson, too. Jamerson's a fantastic bass player. And I listened to a lot of stuff that they did, and I, I kind of formed my style you know, developed what I did listening to them, you know, finding people that I like, you know, which wasn't, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of bass players when I was growing up. What about now? What bass players do you... Do I listen to now? I listen to the sports channel now, <laughs> okay? I play music constantly, and when I'm done doing a show or, or working on stuff, you know... There's not a whole lot of stuff to listen to today, unless, you know, it's jazz. I listen to the old jazz stuff. There's not a whole lot of young bands coming up today that I could say, I like this bass player. Okay. I like Flea. Flea is awesome. You know, he's a great bass player. I have lots of friends that are bass players. You know, Freddie Washington, people like that. But, um, 
say what band I like today, that's kind of hard for me. Are you a Weather Report fan? Big Weather Report fan. Yeah, they're Pretty getting back together. Are they? They're doing. They're, they're playing on landing the, the original lineup. It's going to be Demiola, White, Chick, and uh, mm. Stanley Clark. First tour in oh, 30 right. years. That's right. Yeah. That should be fun. That's nice. Well, we had the same managers when um, 75 when... Um, I'm sorry, I meant Return Forever. Was talking Return about Forever, Chick Corea. I knew that's what you were saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because you, when you said Al Di Miola, I'm going yeah. in Chick Corea. Chick, yeah. yeah. Well, Chick is a good friend of Fred Tackett's. They're good oh. buddies. They go back a ways, yeah. So how did you get hooked up with Little Feet? Well, um... I had just left Delaney and Bonnie uh, um, well, at 72, and uh, Sam and I both I just left Delaney and Bonnie. And um, Dolph Ramp owns SIR, Studio Instrument Rentals. He's a good friend. My brother was the original roadie for Studio Instrument Rentals. Ken and Dolph opened SIR. They had one roadie, my older brother. And um, Dolph calls me up and says, uh, Kenny, there's this really nice band here, and they've been auditioning bass players all week. And he says, and you'd be perfect for this band. And he, he knew I was with Delaney Bonnie and I had just left because we were very close. We still are very close. And he goes, they got a record deal at Warner Brothers, and uh, I think, you know, you, you'd go real nice with them. He says, um, should you give him a call? And he gave me the number, and uh, I called uh, their tour manager, who put me in touch with Billy. So I went over to Billy's place and I was going to audition at his house and I sat down at the piano and he had a note and I tuned up my bass and he goes, you don't have to audition, just we're rehearsing at noon tomorrow, come down. So I went down to the Warner Brothers lot, the movie lot, where they have all the big theaters and they were, they were using all the musicians back then, were using those after they finished filming for the day and I went in and um, Literally played for about five hours with them. Just, you know, Gumbo Willie and all these songs that I had never heard before. Right? Just walked in and started, and Lo just started playing, and I just started playing along. And he goes, uh, Can you make a rehearsal tomorrow? I said, Absolutely. And I just started, you know, we became good friends. He was the best man at my wedding. You know, we were very close. He got me into martial arts. He was a brown belt, Okinawa Ted. He was a tough guy. Real, very gentle, but really tough guy. Hmm. Nice guy. He was a great guy. You mentioned Delaney and Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your experience there. Once again, my brother worked at SIR. And this is 1969. I was 19. And he was hanging out with uh, a couple of guys that managed Selene and Bonnie, and he, he knew them. He ran around with them, and the guy, he went to his house, you know, and hung out, and he was over there, and the guy's pacing back and forth. He goes, what's wrong? He goes, ah, I need a production manager. My brother goes, I'm a production manager. Didn't even know my brother's brother. So my brother became production manager for Delaney and Bonnie. And he goes, now i got to find a bass player. He goes, my brother's a bass player. He goes, no, no, I really need a bass player. My brother goes, you just, you know, when's the rehearsal? You know, when's the audition? And I'll bring my brother. And uh, back then, I was hanging around pool halls, you know. I was shooting pool. I was a big pool hustler. Thought I was, anyway. <laughs> and um, I went down, and, I, and for the first audition, it was at the Brass Ring, and then I got there late. So Delaney was a sweetheart. He gave me uh, three CDs and said, learn a couple of these songs and come back tomorrow around 7. And they started rehearsal at noon all the way through till 7. So I showed up at 7 o'clock, and they still had guys sitting there waiting, and they'd been rehearsing guys all day. The band was drunk. They are sitting there partying. You know, it was 1969, and they were pooped. And I walked in with my brothers, my three brothers, you know, and uh, I hooked up, and he goes, well, uh, what songs do you want to play? I said, I learned all three albums. Just pick a tune. <laughs> and um, 
he started off one of the songs and uh, I jumped up on the drum riser and got in the drummer's face. Drummer kicked and the horn stood up and I started dancing across the floor. Yeah. And Bonnie jumped off the, the stool and we started dancing and playing the tune and the band just started rocking. And then she started this song. After we finished that song, she started this song she called the Red Light Song. That's what my man is for. And she got to the intro through the first verse and went, Delaney, I'm tired. You got the job. <laughs> <laughs> and then she named me Mr. Big Stuff, which Clayton still calls me today, Stuff. And um, I played with him for, um, from 69 to 72. I did two albums with him. Carnegie Hall, a train tour across Canada. You know, it was great. It was great. And you played with a lot of really amazing artists uh, and recorded with Warren Zevon, Robert Palmer. I, I, I played with Robert Zevon. I never recorded with him. Recorded with him. Okay. You know, you said you played. Yeah, I did a tour with him. Richie and I. Oh, oh I got you. Yeah. So out of all these, all, all these artists, Carly Simon, that you've either played with or recorded with, mm -hmm. is there any that stand out in your mind? Bob Weir was my fave. He's my bud. He's a great guy, still to this day. And and uh, Mick Fleetwood. Mick and I really got close. We had a great band called The Zoo with uh, with uh, uh, Billy Burnett and Steve Ross. When did you play in The Zoo with Mick? Were you there for the whole the whole duration? No, um, he had an, a record out. Uh, I think I started with him in '84, '83, '84. And uh, I played with him right up through until I, I got back to the feet. Live. I saw the zoo at a club called Night Town. Where was that? Down in Florida, somewhere. Uh, was it just a four piece? Yeah. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. playing with him. Oh, it was a long time ago. Yeah, in I mean, the I was, 80s. I was touring around in the 80s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I played oh, I with him. Well, I'm a big Mick Fleetwood fan. Yeah, and I, yeah. in the mid 80s, I got with Bobby and the Midnights, and so I was doing. With Billy Cobham, so I was playing with mm -hmm. Mick and Billy Cobham. I was just in heaven, going back and forth. And I toured Australia with Mick a couple of times, which was a lot of fun. And that's where I met Jimmy Barnes and um, did an album with Barnes and Ian. I had a great time. I was very, very fortunate. I got to play with, when I was in Delaney and Bonnie, I got to play with. Um, at one point, he had King Curtis in his band, wow. and he had Dwayne Allman on guitar. The Allman Brothers were the opening act when I joined the band, and they traveled around in a Chevy pickup with a Winnebago on the back, and the entire band and crew stayed in one room with two beds. They slept on the floor. They slept everywhere. And they opened for us. I did Carnegie Hall with them, with Dwayne and Greg, John Hammond, uh, Delaney and Bonnie, King Curtis, King Curtis and Richie Havens across the front, Sam Clayton, myself, and Chuck Morgan. And Sam was sitting on the, the box, you know, with the whole, mm -hmm. playing that. And Chuck Morgan was had his sticks on Delaney's leather suitcase, which really had this real poppy sound, like a snare drum reel. And I sat on a stool and played bass, and we did all these great tune, country tunes and stuff for about an hour. And then the curtain went up, backed up, and the horns came out. Wow. We did another hour and a half in there. It was fantastic. I was 20 years old, 1970. Same year I did the train tour and everything. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it just all came on me. And he was he introduced me as his illegitimate son. <laughs> I still see him. He's, he's a great man. For me, he's the wow. best thing ever happened to me. Took such good care of me. So fast forwarding to Little Feet today uh-huh is there anyone in the band you feel closer to well paul and i play golf everywhere we just play today we're putting a project together right now for october next year with um andy davidson who's a uh, pga tour caddy andy davidson is getting all the caddies and we're getting all musicians, uh, from what I understand, Eddie Van Halen's going to be there. We're trying to get the band to do it. We're going to do it in Vegas. It's for ALS. And we're going to do this golf tournament concert with all the musicians and all the caddies. 
and um, it's going to be in Vegas. I think it's going to be at the Hard Rock. That's what we're working on right now. And um, I forget what golf course. That's for October next year. There, Andy and Paul are in the bus right now, hammering out stuff. They've been working on it for over a year now because of uh, uh, Tom Watson's caddy dying of ALS, who is very, very well known among the guys. And Neon Park, our, um, the gentleman did all the artwork for albums. He died of ALS. Mm. And it's, um, it's, it's a, a charity that's really close to us that we've been doing, you know, since um, Neon had this problem. So um, this is one really good project. And yeah, Paul and I are really close. Of course, Sam and I, you know, we go way back. So he's, he's like my my older brother slash dad, you know. And he, hey, stop what you're doing, you know. He gets like that with me. And it's great. We have a great relationship, the whole band. We all get along really well, really well. And Sean's the mom. She's in there right now making oatmeal, uh, oatmeal raisin cookies for us. She's a chef. She used to have her own catering company. Really? This woman is outrageous, and it's just it's just a lot of fun. We just have a good time, but we play as much golf as we can. I know about her cooking. She's given me some stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she is amazing. So the amazing thing about Little Feet is all the people you've also played with. Is there anyone that sticks out in your mind that has come to sit in? Or vice versa, you guys have played with them. Clapton sits in. Pretty amazing having Clapton sit in. You know, he he just comes to watch Paul play, you know, and then just shakes his head and then gets up there and we look at him and we just shake our heads. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you shaking your head at? <laughs> He's pretty amazing. But I have to tell you, there's so many people that have sat in with the band. Sam Bush, my God. What a musician. Ah, oh, he is amazing. Um, Coco Montoya, okay? He's amazing. It's just, I could go on and on. It's just tons of them. Sonny Landruff. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Whoa. He's a player. What a train. You know, there's a train coming across the stage, and his name is Sonny Landruff. There's just so many, you know. I wouldn't know where to begin. All of them. They all just, you know, carry themselves as musicians very well. What about places the feet has have played? You've played a lot of really interesting places. Yeah. Is there any that Jamaica. Yeah. Every year, Jamaica. We always bring a special guest and um, it's phenomenal. The grand lead on the grill. The people can't wait for us. They cry when we leave. They can't wait for us to come back. Just the workers and the just the people around there because they say we can relax when you guys come because you're just you know you're just open. It's not like the regular people there. We set up a stage on the beach. It's just you know I walk less than fifty yards from my room to the stage. I mean you know and you just we mosey up to the stage. It's no pressure. And the entire place is backstage. There's there's no restrictions anywhere. You can just go anywhere you want. All around, everybody's just everywhere, just dancing. It's just so, and it's right. I, if I jumped off to my side of the stage, I take ten paces. I'm in the water. If ten, if ten. Well, wow, it sounds like fun. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. What about songs that Little Feet performs? Is there any that you really love? Because it looks like you have fun with all of them. All of them. They're, well, you know, they're so, so different. You know, each song is so different. Um, the way Billy writes his stuff and, and does his arrangements. And Paul and Lowell, the way Lowell wrote Rock and Roll Doctor and all of that. He'd take a cassette apart and splice out pieces and go, okay, now play it like that. And it's like, uh, you know, and he, oh man. And, and we would learn it. And Richie would, well, that's a bar of two, four with a bar of seven. And then there's a bar of six, eight. And, and then he'll just sit and play it. And you go, 
Whoa. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I just, I like just playing everything. You know, I, I can't say any one particular song I like to play all the time. You know, I can tell you a few that I'm kind of tired of playing. <laughs> And they're all great songs, but you know, this is the burden you carry. You play this song mm -hmm. until you, you know, until you don't play anymore because right. people want to hear it. Certain songs, if you don't play them, they're like, what's the deal? You know, right. we want the chicken or as Richie calls it, the ode to poultry. <laughs> <laughs> you and Rich are an extremely tight rhythm section. And of all the terms you play with that side of Richie, who's the one you like to play with the most? You've had great experience with that rhythm section. Oh, you mean... There's somebody else outside of Richie. Oh, yeah. Billy Cobham. Billy? Yeah, that's what I go saying. Billy Cobham are, are who people just don't really understand, may, may not know what a great drummer he is, and that's Mick Fleetwood. This man is a rock. You know oh what? Oh, my God. I'm glad you mentioned that, because I've always thought the exact same thing. He, and I've known drummers who don't even appreciate what he, he does. He is amazing. And I've always thought he was amazing, and, and he had... Oh. Him and John and John, the, are John and I are very, very close. My right. wife oh, has her own business. I, you know, got to quit working at going to work and complain about these people you work with. Start your own business. You start a clothing store. His wife, Julie McVie, well, I want to be in it. And they started the business mm -hmm. together. And um, she's since moved on because, you know, what she got to do? She had a house to build in, in uh, Maui, so. You know, off they go, but uh, she's always around. And John was one who didn't think he was a very good bass player, you know. And I said, John, name a song that wasn't a hit that you played on. Can Maybe you one. think of one? <laughs> uh, uh, Warren Zevon's biggest hit, Werewolves of London. A lot of people don't know. That's John McVie and Mick Fleetwood playing on Werewolves of London. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's one of his biggest hits, you know. And, and I said, you got the Midas Touch? And so does Mick. Just his style is, you know. The style and how he places things. Is yes, really the way different. his interpretation. His phrasing is amazing. Oh, and yes. you just know when he's playing and he's just like, pow. He's just so much fun he's to play with. He's very realistic. But what yes. he does is like every note that he hits is, is amazingly count. He's amazing. I love playing with him. That's why. I, I'm very blessed. I play with three of the greatest drummers that I know of in my time, you know. And there's a lot of great drummers out there, you know. And I'm not saying there aren't, but these three to me were, you know, just three totally different styles, you know. You have to play three, you know, different ways to play with them. Not three different ways, but my style fitted in with all three with no trouble. When so I you, got you with, and John aren't alike as bass players. No. Not, well, John's a very really simplistic, very uh, rudimentary right there, you know. And when he, if he just makes a move it's just you know every new note means something you know he, he's great that's cool yeah, yeah what do you think the secret of little feet's longevity is their longevity um just too dumb to quit i don't know what <laughs> <laughs> it's this or bad groceries that's what we always say <laughs> this or bad groceries don't give up your day gig we just you know I, we would always say, you know, like, everyone, you know, our music just didn't in the early days just didn't catch on. You know, well, we'll fix them. We'll just keep playing, <laughs> and that's how we were. We just too stubborn to stop. We have a, we were having a great time. We still are having a great time. You know, we're good friends. The only thing that broke us up was Lowell dying. Had Lowell not passed away, we would have still been together, fighting. Hooting and hollering, you know, not getting along. But when you get on stage, you know, have an argument with someone and not be speaking. And by the end of the show, you're hugging because the music just fills your soul. And I love the music. You know, I, I get caught listening to Paul solo. Really start singing a solo. I have to, you know, concentrate on what I'm doing because it just sounds so good. It's like, I never heard that before. <laughs> Whoa, did you hear that? What he just did? And I'm just like, oh, okay, where am I? Where am I? You know, I, I love it. And it's just, and it's still today. Eh? Fred Taggett, mm -hmm. now he's playing trumpet. It's like, Fred, well, I used to play trumpet in the orchestra State marching band with Bill Clinton. I'm like, well, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> but but I, I originally started as a drummer. Taggett plays everything. It's just ridiculous. 
Just ridiculous. And did you ever look at all the people he's yeah, played with? It's yeah, it's enormous. Yeah, really him, and, enormous. him and Billy and Richie's is still growing. Yeah. Still growing. Mm-hmm. Did he tell you he was getting married when we get back? Uh, no. I he, he was sweet talking to his girl here on his cell phone. They're getting married on the 23rd of oh, May. Really? Oh, yeah. No, we didn't say that. Oh, yeah. Well, Congratulations to him. He's a good man. So when someone goes and sees Little Feet, mm-hmm. what is it you hope that that person in the audience is getting out of it? Well, if, if the person is like our audience who understands music and, and you know, oh, that solo, they critique you, you know, oh, that solo you played to, was, was great. And I see where you're going. You were doing it like you did the other day. You had this part that you're playing and they critique you. They understand music. And that's what that's what we like about our audience and we hope and and it's you know because the music is complex you know it's funky it's country but it's also complex and um we just hope they just have a good time that's all i can say is just have a good time you know the last time you guys were here at the variety playhouse i was sitting down and i was really really tired i was uh-huh. exhausted and Jeff here says, let's push up to the front and let's be right in front, right below the stage. And I was kind of tired and I didn't want to do it, but I did. And I was really glad I did because you guys make the energy sort of there. an exciting yeah. concert. It's just a bunch of old men still jumping around. It just makes you feel young, you know. Richie, and you go, oh, yeah, I'm ready now, <laughs> you know. It's good. I Do you consider enjoy. Little Feet audience as a more uh, musical audience? Or as a musicians, musicians band? Sort of? Well, we have a, lo- a lot of a lot of musicians mm-hmm. come to hear us play. Lots of there's always a lot of musicians out there. That's true. You know, and um, I I don't know if we're the musicians musicians band, but I know that we were. You know, we get a lot of. Um, an eclectic crowd, you know, we get kids, we get, you know, we get all kind of people, you know, but generally I, I think, um, a lot of musicians and people that understand music, you know, yeah. Well, little feet fans are certainly devoted. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Phil Lesh had a great statement about, uh, uh, dead hands. He says, dead fans are very, very hard to get. And even harder to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was very cute. Very interesting. Well, I have one final question. Fire away. Given that this broadcast is going out all over the world. Really? My question to you, Mr. Gradney. Mm-hmm. What would you like to say to the world? To the world? Well... Uh, let's keep it green and uh, let's uh, end poverty, you know, let's end starvation and peace in Africa, peace around the world. That's what I like to say to the world. Let's keep it green. Well, thank you so much for giving us this interview. It's truly my pleasure. You really entertained me well thank you thank you i hope the I'm glad. Listeners. and i didn't charge you no you didn't <laughs> <laughs> you should have maybe well thank you so much my again. pleasure a bop bop dealy bop bop ba doo bop zee bock a doodly not bock ki cha cha kook a baza look a baza neck a pook a kid a go da dum bock doodly zan ba dum ba dak a bock a kid Zika Waka Pukalong Gondu Lugidibu. Goodbye.